Welcome back. In this video, I'll introduce the concept of functions in assembly. A function in this context is basically a chunk of code that we can jump to, perform some operations, and then jump back from where we came from. Jump back to where we came from. Uh, this allows us to both reuse code and to interact bi-directionally with C code or other compiled languages. Meaning we'll be able to write functions for C using assembly and we'll also be able to call functions written in C from assembly. First, I'd like to introduce a new operation named call. If you're familiar with functions from other languages, then you probably, you probably already have an idea of what this operation does. The first thing that call will do is push the instruction pointer onto the stack. Technically, it pushes the location of the next instruction onto the stack, but I'll get to that here shortly. Next, it jumps to the location that we specify. This is going to be the location of the function that we're calling. The combination of these two actions means that we can jump to somewhere else in our program and then jump back to where we came from. This gives it an advantage over a normal jump in that you don't have to hard code the return location for your function. It can be called from anywhere in your code, and since you're pushing the return location onto the stack, you'll be able to jump back. So let's write some code already. First is the usual entry point setup stuff. Next, I'm calling a label named func setting EAX to 1 for the system exit call, and then performing the system call to do that system exit. Notice that I'm not setting EBX. Uh, this is because I'm going to do that in this function, this func function that we're calling here, just to prove that the function call actually works. And then the function func will just begin with a label, uh, which will point to some code that moves 42 into EBX. And then we'll pop into EAX the return location that the call operation pushed onto the stack. Right? So when we use that call operation, it pushes the location in the code that the call operation, or actually, again, the next instruction, it pushes that location of the code onto the stack. And so here I'm popping that location of the code off of the stack, putting it into EAX. And finally, uh, we'll jump back to the location stored in EAX, which will be the location of the instruction immediately after the call operation. In this case, that's where move EAX1 is. This is why call pushes the location of the next instruction. If it pushed the location of the call instruction itself, then the jump back would result in an infinite loop, which obviously isn't what we want. Now, if you do the usual assemble, link, execute, and then inspect the return code, it should be 42. Yay, we performed a function call, and then we returned. But there's a way to simplify this. Instead of popping the return location into EAX and then jumping to it like we just did, there's an instruction named ret, R-E-T, that does exactly this. If you guessed that ret is short for return, then you guessed correctly. It will return from our function by popping the location off of the stack and then jumping there. Kind of like what we just did, except it's shorter and it doesn't involve messing with the EAX register. But what if you want to use the stack in this function and still be able to return from it? Obviously, you could just be really careful and make sure that you pop anything off of the stack that you pushed onto it, right? You can make sure that you preserve the layout of the stack. Uh, and you'd have to do this because you want your return instruction to return using that uh, location that should be on the top of the stack. So you have to preserve the layout of the stack. Um, but instead of just being careful and you know trying to use best practices to make sure you don't alter the stack, there's a common technique for preserving the stack using a register that's known as a base pointer. This base pointer register is named 
EBP in x86 assembly, and it's it's going to hold the value of ESP, which, if you remember, is the top of your stack. So EBP is going to hold where the top of the stack was when the function was entered. Thus, we're moving ESP into EBP, and this way we can restore the top of the stack before we reach the return operation. Now we're free to manipulate ESP, so I'm going to subtract 2 from it, which is how we allocate 2 bytes on the stack. Then I'm moving the values for the string high into these two new allocated bytes and performing the usual system write call to prevent or to print that string uh, to standard out that we just moved. Next, I'm restoring ESP by moving the value that we just saved in EBP back into it. This eff effectively deallocates the space that we just allocated. Um, and puts the stack back into the state that it was when the function was called so that we can call the return or so that we can use the return instruction. That way our return instruction returns to the correct location because it's stored on the top of the stack. Finally, since I'm no longer setting EBX uh, for the exit code, I'll go ahead and add a line before the final system exit call to set it to zero. Now we can assemble, link, and execute the program again, and it says hi. Cool. Now, you may have guessed that this technique for storing the top of the stack will be complicated by the fact that if our function calls another function that stores ESP into EBP, uh, like this one does, it will alter EBP before we return, and of course that will ruin everything for us, right? So a common technique is to push the value, the previous value of EBP onto the stack when you enter the function. So you're basically going to preserve the old value of EBP by just pushing it onto the stack. And then you pop it uh, back into EBP before you return, you know, restoring what it used to be. And this technique of pushing and then popping EBP will allow for nested function calls without the functions interfering with each other's stack. There's actually a term for each of these actions. Uh, this setup portion of preserving the stack and allocating space is known as the prologue of the function. And this portion of restoring the stack and returning is known as the epilogue. And now you know how to write functions in assembly. Congratulations. In the next video, uh, I'll show how to pass values to functions as well as how to return values from functions. And I'll also give a brief overview of how to use these function conventions to interact with C code. Bye.